everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be doing a chattier video and I asked for questions over on my Instagram. You guys sent me loads, so we're just going to do a Q&A today. Um, I did get quite a few similar kinds of questions, so I've kind of rounded them up so I can cover as much as possible. So get yourself a hot drink or a cup of tea and get comfy because I think it's going to be a long one. I have all of my questions written down here because my phone is there. Um, so if you see me looking down at this, that's what I'm doing. So we are going to jump straight into it with the first question. Okay, question number one is how and when did you start to sew and are you self-taught? So I thought I would just tell you a little bit about my sewing story. This was by far the number one most asked question. I was really young as in primary school age, maybe seven or eight. Um, I used to do a little craft club. That was probably my very first look into sewing. I can remember we made really cute little Christmas decorations one year, um, but that was just hand sewing and really, really basic. Definitely wasn't building any sort of skill. And then when I was 15, my mum and dad surprised me with my first sewing machine for Christmas. Complete surprise, I'd never used a sewing machine before. I think they just kind of knew that I loved all things crafty and guessed that I would love sewing as well. So I bought a couple of books, um, nothing that was good enough for me to remember, but my main source of like where I taught myself was from YouTube. So I would just Google how to do certain techniques, have a go, copy what I could. Also, because I was only 15 and I was fairly small, I was just sewing kids' patterns, really. What I found the most helpful was to try and find a YouTube sew-along, um, so a pattern that someone had already made and filmed the whole process. Um, because at the beginning, I found it so hard to follow a pattern and understand the instructions. So I guess bit by bit, I just built up my sewing that way. I've not sewn consistently since I was 15 because um, I had some time living abroad and when I was at uni I kind of neglected my sewing machine um, but definitely in the past few years now I'm just obsessed. Can't be without my gorgeous machines. <laughs> what are some of the first things that you have made? Well as I mentioned before fairly small when I was 15 so I would sort of go into John Lewis and look through the pattern books and try and find sort of kids or young adult patterns that I liked. We're talking about 10 years ago now and I feel like even 10 years ago there wasn't the choice of patterns that there is now and at the time I can remember I found it so difficult to find um, designs that I liked. They weren't really me, I was just choosing them because that was what was there. So I can't say I was making things that I absolutely love. My fabric choices were questionable, honestly. So here's a little secret for you. You might be able to spot my first ever garment on the sewing bay because we had to bring in photos and things that meant something to us to stick on, you know, like the back wall bit that we have behind us. So the first thing I ever made was for some reason a cape. Don't ask me what possessed me to make a cape jacket, but I did. And it was in like a green, baby pink, I think there was a bit of blue in there, like pastel tweed. And I did big pink love heart buttons and I wore it to school on unclosed day, like non-uniform day. And I just thought I was the bee's knees. And honestly, it was, it was not cute, but I absolutely loved it. I was so proud. What sewing machine and tools would you recommend for a complete beginner? First of all, I have to say it excites me so much to see how many of my followers on Instagram are either beginner sewers or people who haven't even sewn before, but they're really interested and want to get started. So I'm really hoping to do as many beginner friendly videos as I can on my channel. I just want to help you get into sewing because honestly it is the best thing and I just know that you'd all love it. First talking about machines. When I was 15 I got that first sewing machine. It was not anything fancy at all. They don't actually make the model anymore. It was a Toyota one and I believe that Toyota don't even make sewing machines anymore. But we're talking it was like the most basic of basic and honestly that is what I'd recommend for starting out. Now um, you can't really see it's kind of just out of range here but I do have like a, 
um, digital faff sewing machine now. That's got all the bells and whistles and I love it. But honestly, all of that would have just gone over my head when I was a beginner. So if you're starting out and looking to get a machine, I would 100% recommend just going for something fairly basic. I think most sewing machine brands have a model that's about maybe around the £100 mark. As long as it stitches forwards, backwards and has like a zigzag stitch to finish your edges of the fabric, genuinely that's all you need. Now moving on to tools, I've had a quick look through my sewing box and I've picked out my top things that I think you would find really useful to start out with. First of all, you will need some scissors. So I have many scissors on my back wall, as you can see, but these are my favourites because they're really nice and sharp. So I have these scissors here um, that I got. These are for cutting fabric. And then I have these little embroidery scissors as well, um, which are great for trimming threads. Both of these are from Fabric Zone. Um, they're fairly new. I'll leave the link to them down below if I can find them. So you really need some good quality scissors. It makes cutting out so much easier. Then you will need some pins good quality pins as well i would say i like the all metal ones or glass headed pins if you get the ones with plastic on the end you have to be careful if you're ironing because you can melt the ends then you'll also need some hand sewing needles as well for things like buttons and fastenings so again this is from prim this is a bit fancy so you don't need this but you just do it like that and then I have all my hand sewing pins in there, which I love. My next recommendation, although not essential, is something that I would highly recommend for a beginner. And I only just cottoned on to this a few months ago. But this is one of those, um, I don't know what you call them, oh, friction pens. And I use this instead of Taylor's chalk. So it amazes me. But somehow this pen is removed with the heat of an iron. It's always useful to have some way of marking your fabric. If you prefer Taylor's chalk, you can use that. But I just love this because it's so easy and precise to use because obviously it's a normal pen nib. And then you just go over it with the iron and it comes straight off. And then lastly, I would argue that this is the most important uh, tool for a beginner. <laughs> and even now I couldn't be without mine. And it is the quick unpick. <laughs> You'll find that the quick unpick or seam ripper will be your best friend. The amount of times I've had to sit and unpick loads of seams because I've done something wrong. But you know what? It's all part of the process. So next is another beginner friendly sewing question. And it's what are your top tips for beginner sewers? And luckily I have a lot. That saying, don't run before you can walk. And I think that's really what you need to bear in mind when you're a completely beginner sewer. You will see things like, I don't know, puff sleeve dresses, prom style dresses that you want to just jump into straight away. And I would recommend really, really trying to just hold back, think about your sewing journey as a whole and start with things that are going to be accessible and leave you feeling really pleased and proud of yourself because you've managed to do them. When it comes to patterns, still one of my favourite brands ever is Tilly and the Buttons. And I've grabbed one of her patterns to show you. I mean, first of all, the packaging is gorgeous. But one thing that I found really difficult when I was starting out was just understanding pattern speak and all the instructions and there would be lines and lines of instructions and no pictures and it was just really hard to comprehend. So the thing that I love about Tilly's patterns, if I show you, is the instruction booklet that it comes with. It goes through everything in so much detail and there's a picture literally for every single um, instruction. I would definitely recommend looking at her patterns to start with and it even says on the bottom like this one's for um, a confident beginner but she's got complete beginner ones as well. And then a last couple of things that I would say is firstly making a toile before your final garment. So if you don't know what a toile is, it's when you use more basic or cheaper fabric to make up your design. 
mainly it's used to check the fit but also it's almost like the practice run so you're not cutting into your final fabric and then trying it on at the end and being disappointed. I tend to do that when I've got really special fabric that I don't want to ruin. I feel like I'm rambling a bit on this one but there's just so much that I feel like I need to tell you when you're a beginner but I would just say overall don't be disheartened. I've had a couple of people say to me well do you still mess up? Do you still make mistakes? I would say one in four of my garments don't turn out. Maybe the fit's wrong or I just don't like it and I end up having to make it into something else. Even now I make mistakes all the time so if you end up making something and it just doesn't go how you want it to go please don't let that put you off because I promise you the next thing you make you'll be obsessed with and you'll remember why you loved it in the first place. Away from the beginner stuff now, more onto my sewing. I had a couple of questions about what was my favourite piece that I've ever made and the hardest piece that I've ever made. I've pulled out my wardrobe, my favourite piece ever. Now, when I was choosing these, we're not talking about anything I made on the show. You might have seen this if you follow me on Instagram, but my favourite thing I've ever made is my Christmas dress that I made this year. If on fabric but it's just hairy. I don't even know how to describe it. To me, it looks like it's got like lips on it. I mean, it's an abstract pattern. I don't think it's meant to be anything or maybe like peacock eyes or something. I don't even know, but I just love the fabric. So it is a midi dress and then it does up at the back. So it's got an open back and then it has this big bow, a puff sleeve, obviously, because my favorite thing would have a puff sleeve and yeah i felt like an absolute princess when i wore this at christmas i wore it to a christmas time wedding and also on christmas day and i didn't want to take it off and i just feel like this will be something that i wear for years and years and never get tired of when it comes to the hardest thing i've ever made it actually happens to be behind me today on my mannequin. This is my quilted jacket that I have made. I would say that this was probably the hardest thing I've made just because there were so many processes. So first I had to quilt the pieces. I also added this collar onto mine, so this big collar. Um, and I pleated all these bits around the edge. I added these pleated pockets. So I think it was more just, there was loads of different elements. It took ages. And on the binding all the way around, I had to be super precise. So it felt like a long, tricky project, but it was so worth it in the end. Another question that I love, because I feel like it's highly relevant to a lot of people, said, I love sewing, but always start a project and never finish it. Do you have any tips to avoid this? My biggest tip would be, do not have a huge fabric stash. It's so much easier said than done. My fabric stash right now is over there and I'm looking at it and it almost gives me anxiety because <laughs> it's the most fabric I've ever had. Prior to maybe this time last year, I would never have more than maybe three to four fabrics on my shelves and that's for two reasons. One, I get fed up of fabric if I look at it for too long so I will buy something and then I almost fall out of love with it which obviously isn't very helpful if you're spending money on fabric. And two, I like to have a clear vision of what I'm going to make. I'm literally the most indecisive person ever, so I don't want lots of options. Overall, my biggest tip would be to be really, really conscious and considerate of what you're choosing to sew. Take time to really think about what's missing in your wardrobe, what will you get the wear out of, and then I feel like you will be more inclined to see something through from start to finish. Do you listen to anything while sewing? 100% so in my sewing room I have my little Alexa that I love to listen to stuff on. Something that you probably wouldn't know about me is that I am the biggest true crime fan. Like if you're a true crime fan tell me below because I need to find my people. Mainly I love to listen to podcasts when I'm sewing and my absolute favourites well first one would be Crime Junkie and the second one would be Anatomy of Murder so both take you through true crime stories sort of from beginning to end crime junkie is a bit more um i don't want to say fun because people being murdered isn't fun so wrong choice of words program crime junkie is a bit more light-hearted a bit more chatty anatomy of murder is an ex-criminal prosecutor and an ex-deputy sheriff 
who take you through cases and you hear from witnesses and court statements. I am literally obsessed. There's that TikTok sign that someone sent me that's like, and then her head was cut off and then her leg was cut off and something like that. Anyways, if you walk into my sewing room when I'm sewing, that's pretty much what you'll hear. What did you study at school and did you go to university? So I stayed on at school and did sixth form and I did French, English literature and biology. I actually had to think about that for a second, it's so long ago. Then I went to university and I studied French and took up Spanish alongside of it. So I learned that as a new language, which meant that it was a four year course. So my third year was abroad. So I stayed in the south of Spain for a year and I went to uni in the south of Spain and I was also a nanny at the same time. And then straight after uni, once I graduated, I went back to uni again <laughs> and did my teacher training for the year and then started teaching and that was that. Can you tell us more about your job? Why, of course. I think some people forget that I am actually a full-time teacher, like that's my job. So sewing is definitely, although it's my passion, right now it's just a hobby for me. I work full time as a secondary school teacher. I teach French and Spanish. I teach ages 12 to 18. <laughs> An interesting job, no day is the same. It's definitely challenging at times, but also very rewarding. I also had quite a few questions from fellow teachers actually, which was really sweet to see. They were all asking, how do you find time for hobbies between work and family? It's a really tricky one. Obviously anyone with a demanding job, it's hard to find time for yourself outside of work. I would say that overall, I'm one of those annoying people who likes to be busy at all times. I rarely just sit and don't do anything. Like even when I'm watching TV, I'll be knitting or researching my next project. So that's a bit of an issue of mine, I'm not gonna lie. I find it hard to switch off. So naturally I always want to be doing something. I would say that most of my sewing's done at the weekends. My partner will go out and play golf or do something and I'll maybe have a few hours to myself. So that's when I do most of my sewing um, or in school holidays, I get a lot done then as well. It's gonna be interesting to see how it is when the baby comes along. So obviously my free time won't just be my time, it will be the baby's as well. So how do you feel about being a teacher and having such a social media presence? I'm not gonna lie, it is a bit weird and it's something that I'm still getting used to I'm trying to find a good balance for. I've always um, blogged and done my Instagram, my sewing Instagram even before the show. But obviously now just a lot more people see it. Kids aren't supposed to follow me on social media. So if I do see that any of them are, um, I have to block them, which seems a bit savage. <laughs> but those are the rules. I would say that I am quite choosy with what I share online. I, f I feel like people think they know you really well from being on TV or seeing what you post. But actually what I put out there is probably only about 5% of who I am and what I'm like as a person. So I guess I just don't put anything out there that I wouldn't be happy for my students to see or for people to know about me. And we are on to the very last question, which is nice because it's looking to the future. And quite a few people asked a variety of different things, but essentially, would you make your own patterns? Would you do your own sewing classes in the future? Would you have your own brand? In a nutshell, absolutely. I mean, as I mentioned, sewing, fashion, being creative, it is literally just running through my blood all the time. I love it. I go to bed dreaming of what I'm gonna sew or what projects I can do next. And if I could spend all day every day doing that and getting that creative feeling, I would. There's a lot of changes coming up big changes. I'm going to be a mum. <laughs> um, and I guess I just need to take time to figure out 100% what I want, what's going to make me happy, what's going to continue inspiring other people, because that's something that I've found so rewarding from the show so far, is just how many people I've been able to connect with and inspire and the messages that I get from people saying that they love my stuff and 
or they want to make it themselves. Honestly, it blows me away every day. Why do I feel emotional? Oh my god, my hormones. So yeah, I think I just need to take some time. I don't want to rush into anything. I want to just really carefully think about what's going to make me happy, where I want to go in the future, who knows. So all I know is you're probably going to be seeing a lot more of me because I'm not going anywhere. So that is it. I've got to the end of the questions. I honestly could have done so many more, but I just feel like this video is going to be hours long. So well done if you got to the end anyways. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this more chatty style video, please let me know down below. If you're not subscribed yet, it would mean the world if you could subscribe. It just means that more people can see my videos and I'll hopefully speak to you soon. Bye.